In this lesson, we're going to focus on story elements, specifically in regards to conflict. A conflict is a struggle between two opposing forces or characters. It is also referred to as the problem that the story has that the main characters need to solve. There's two main types of conflict, internal and external. An internal conflict is a problem that a character has within themselves. It is going to be expressed in some sort of negative feeling or emotion such as hate, fear, guilt, regret, grief, etc. Looking at the example, this is what it would look like in the text. When she looked up, he was gone. Fear suddenly took hold as she realized what loneliness felt like for the first time. She was young, naive, and alone, and had no clue how to survive in this enormous city. So here you see the character is struggling with an internal conflict. She feels negative emotions such as fear, loneliness, and cluelessness. Now let's look at external conflict. An external conflict is when a character is struggling with some sort of outside force, such as a tornado, a bully, a broken computer, or even being considered an outcast by society. Now let's look at what an example would look like in a text. Snow began to fall heavily as we trudged across the dark fields. The wind buffeted us from every direction, and cold bit through my wet parka. I thought of home and the fireplace I hadn't seen in far too long. So here we can see that the external conflict has to do with the weather around them. Okay, they're in dark fields. There's heavy winds from every direction. It's cold. It's raining. They're wet. And so the character is definitely struggling with a force of nature. Now there are many different types of conflicts in regards to person versus whatever it is. Now remember your character is going to face some sort of conflict and usually they will face more than one conflict. So let's look at the different types of major conflicts you will see your character face. First is person versus self. So the character is going to struggle with a negative feeling or emotion. This is the only type of internal conflict that your character is going to have, a person versus self. All the other conflicts are going to be external. So the next one is person versus person. This is when your character has a problem with another character. So it's usually going to be because they have opposing desires. Think of your protagonist versus your antagonist. They both want different things and so therefore they're going to have a problem with each other. So that is person versus person. Then you have person versus nature. This is when your character is struggling with some sort of natural force, such as a tornado, a hurricane, an animal, maybe a tsunami. Something in nature is really being a problem for your character. And so that's what person versus nature is. Next, we have person versus technology. So this is when your character is going to struggle with some form of technology. Now this can be new technology, futuristic, te futuristic technology. This can even be older technology. Maybe their windmill broke or their water wheel broke. Um, maybe this is really set early later on in the future and you know their um, you know society is falling apart because the robots are taking over. So this is definitely uh, it really depends on the time frame but person versus technology is a a problem that you see, especially as we move forward in the future with more technology, is starting to pop up more in stories. Then you have person versus supernatural. So this is when the character is struggling with something that's not of this world or something that cannot be explained by science. So for example, ghosts, vampires, Bigfoot, um, witches, um, any sorts of spirits or things that you know you see and can understand such as multiverses or multiple dimensions and things like that. So this is person versus supernatural. Then you have person versus society. Person versus society is when a character is going against what society thinks is normal and so they're considered different or an outcast. So this could be, you know, going against the government, uh, fighting against, you know, the, the, the bigger force that, you know, maybe it's like a revolution. 
Uh, then you have person versus fate. So this is when a character has a problem with their predetermined destiny. This you normally see in mythology, especially in Greek mythology. Um, not many stories really focus on fate, but um, also you might see it a lot in tragedies. So this is when the character really is trying to go against what has been predetermined for them, and usually they fail because obviously their life has been predetermined and they can't change it. So now we're going to take each one of these and we're going to look at what they would look like in the text. So we have a text example for each one so you can see kind of what it looks like. So below is an excerpt from Gora by Tagor and it is an example of a momentary internal conflict. As the cab drove away, the girl joined her hands in a brief namaskar. Utterly unprepared for this gesture, Benoit remained frozen, unable to respond. Back home, he repeatedly cursed himself for this minor lapse, scrutinizing his own conduct in their company from their first encounter to the moment of parting. He felt that his manner had been rather uncivil. He tormented himself with futile thoughts of what he could have said or done at specific moments. So here we see that our character is struggling inside themselves. They have quite a few negative emotions. They're scrutinizing themselves they're cursing themselves and tormenting themselves and so therefore they're struggling inside themselves so that's why it's person versus self person versus person we're going to use an excerpt from harry potter and the sorcerer's stone when september came he would be going off to secondary school and for the first time in his life he wouldn't be with dudley dudley had been accepted at uncle vernon's old private school smeltings piers polkis was going there too Harry, on the other hand, was going to Stonewall High, the local public school. Dudley thought this was very funny. They stuffed people's head down the toilet the first day at Stonewall, he told Harry. Want to come upstairs and practice? No, thanks, said Harry. The poor toilets never had anything as horrible as your head down it. It might be sick. Then he ran before Dudley could work out what he'd said. So here we have a person versus person conflict. It's Harry Potter and his uh, cousin Dudley. And so here we see that Dudley obviously has, is the opposing force to Harry, and he wants to do something mean, which is to shove Harry's head down the toilet. And of course, Harry, being witty as he is, comes with a nice comeback and runs off before he can get into any more trouble with Dudley. Then we have an excerpt of what person versus nature would look like. This is from Life of Pi. So this is a really good part in the book. It's set in the middle of the sea. So it says, the ship sank. It made a sound like a monstrous metallic burp. Things bubbled at the surface and then vanished. Everything was screaming. The sea, the wind, my heart. From the lifeboat, I saw something in the water. I cried, Richard Parker, is that you? It's so hard to see. Oh, that this rain would stop. Richard Parker, Richard Parker, yes, it is you. I could see his head. He was struggling to stay at the surface of the water. Jesus, Mary, Muhammad, and Vishnu, how good to see you, Richard Parker. Don't give up, please. Come to the lifeboat. Do you hear this whistle? Tree, tree, tree. So right here, obviously, the, um, the main character is struggling because they're going against the force of nature, which that is the ocean and the, 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 the boat or the ship that they were on has just sunk and they're on a lifeboat and they're actually very glad to see this tiger in the water and trying to get the tiger to come to the lifeboat with them. Okay, so then we have person versus technology. So this is an ex excerpt from 1984. The voice came from an oblong metal plaque like a gold mirror from which uh, formed part of the surface of the right-hand wall. Winston turned a switch and the voice sank somewhat, though the words were still distinguishable. The instrument, the telescreen it was called, could be dimmed, but there was no way of shutting it off completely. The telescreen received and transmitted simultaneously. Any sound that Winston made above the level of a very low whisper would be picked up by it. Moreover, so long as he remained within the field of vision, which the metal plaque commanded, he could be seen as well as heard. So here in this book, 1984, each uh, household or any room for that matter has what's called a telescreen that is monitoring its citizens to make sure that they are not trying to go against the government. The government has complete control of its citizens. They live in a dystopian society. And so therefore, our character, he wants to be part of the revolution. And he is uh, having this conflict of person versus technology because he understands that he's being monitored every second of every day by this telescreen and 
you know, Big Brother is watching him, and so therefore he uh, he has this conflict with it because how can he be part of a revolution when he is constantly being watched? Then we have person versus supernatural. So here's a short example. This is from the, the drama Julius Caesar written by Shakespeare. So Caesar says, what sayest thou to me? Speak once again. And the soothsayer, which is also a fortune teller kind of sorts, says, beware the Ides of March. And Caesar says, he's a dreamer. Let us leave him pass. So the soothsayer or fortune teller here is actually... Um, kind of telling the future and telling Caesar that he needs to be aware of March 15th because something bad is going to happen that day. And it turns out that that's the day that Caesar will fall to his demise. And so therefore, we have a little bit of supernatural playing right here because um, the future is being told. That's not something that happens on a day-to-day -day basis. Then you have person versus society. So an example of man versus society would actually be seen in Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter. Um, this is when the main character is shunned by her people. Um, now, her people are the Puritans, uh, which are a very religious group. Now, she's shunned because she had a baby with a man that wasn't her husband. Her husband was lost at sea, and so she kind of moved on with her life, and she had a baby with this man, and so they're, they're shunning her for it. And so this is person versus society um, as an example, because the society does not agree with her, and they feel that she did the wrong thing. Then we have person versus fate. So in the drama Antigone, fate plays a major role as the characters believe it's their lives are predetermined by fate. So for example, Creon says, lead me away. I have been rash and foolish. I have killed my son and my wife. I took, uh, I look for comfort. My comfort lies here dead. Whatever my hands have touched has come to nothing. Fate has brought all my pride to a thought of dust. And so uh, Creon, he believes that his fate was for him to basically be living in a life of tragedy and because of his pride and so basically his pride came before a fall and so therefore he um, is now going to live a tragic fate. Now connecting theme and conflict, the plot of the story is based on the central conflict. So the conflict is really going to connect to the story's subject. So the conflict is uh, solved in the story's resolution and is really what makes the story interesting. Without a conflict, the story is not interesting at all. Um, so the conflict plays a really big role in the plot of the story. Now the way the conflict is resolved helps to reveal the story's theme because obviously throughout the conflict being solved, your character is going to learn lessons. And so the lessons that the character learns is going to tell you what the theme is. Based off of the lessons they learn, that's the lesson that the author of the story wanted you as the reader to learn as well. So the way that the character is going to resolve that conflict is going to help to reveal that theme or that lesson that the author wanted you to know. Well, this has been conflict. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to identify conflict and what conflict is. And regards to literature.